And look, I know insurance isn't the most exciting topic, but trust me, it's something you need to understand if you're in the commercial property game. I've run the numbers on properties ranging from 700,000 to 3 million. Let's break down what actually affects your insurance costs. Now, let me just mention that there are so many factors that need to be considered, which will change the outcome of the premium. But for the purpose of this video and the comparative analysis I'm gonna do in the next section, these are the five factors that influenced our client's insurance premiums. First, the age of the building. Generally, newer buildings cost less to insure because they're built to modern standards and they're less likely to have issues. Second, construction materials. Fire resistant materials like concrete or steel typically result in lower premiums compared to more flammable materials. Third, fire protection. Having measures like fire blankets and extinguishers can significantly reduce your costs. It shows insurers you're serious about preventing damage. Fourth, security features. Things like deadlocks on doors and good external lighting matter. They reduce the risk of break-ins and vandalism. And fifth, this is one that's often overlooked, the type of tenant. Different businesses carry different types of risks. Some types of businesses are considered higher risk than others due to the nature of the operations. For example, a cafe with deep fries is considered a higher risk than say a clothing shop. I personally own a laundromat and I have to pay a higher premium due to that because of all the equipment in the shop. Depending on the property, I would also recommend machinery breakdown cover for things like aircon units, cold rooms, and roller doors. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that insurance is definitely more of a strategic decision in commercial compared with residential, and something that you just ensure you're doing the right due diligence on.